What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another Copart walk around. Today is Tuesday. We don't have so many cars to go through this week, unfortunately. We'll see if next week is any better, but I've decided to pull carnage vehicles from the videos. Uh, there's a lot of people getting offended. I've seen a lot of uh, people upset in the comment section. So I decided we're gonna try to focus on cars that I feel, at least from the pictures I see on uh, the Copart website, are a little more rebuildable, a little more realistic um, for things that we're gonna wanna purchase for the channel. Now, with that said, I've also seen a lot of people saying, Randy, you haven't bought anything in a while. Uh, it's true, I understand, but please, please bear, in, bear with me keep in mind that I have spent an unprecedented amount of money for me on on the Porsche. Um, that pickup truck has been uh, sucking down quite a bit of money. The house, the, the house is eating a ton of money. I got to make sure I got money put back for the dealer's license, bond, insurance, all that stuff. So uh, it's slim pickings around auto auction rebuilds right now, folks. So please, I beg you, bear with me. Enjoy the content that I can bring you from the house and the Porsche and uh, the pickup truck. And we may be picking up something this week. I am on the hunt. Something just landed on me and I've never seen anything like that before. <laughs> I, I am on the hunt for something new for the channel, but I gotta be real careful about what we're picking up. So with that, let's get started. To start this video off, we've got a 2018 Chevy Sonic. I know it's not the car for everybody, but I'll tell you what it is. It is a rock solid, economical gas saver. And it's not a bad looking car either. This has 19,410 miles on the odometer. And from the pictures, it didn't look like it was all that bad. Now, this side is wrecked, obviously. But what I didn't see was that the A-pillar has been pretty significantly damaged. I could see that the rocker was. You can't really see, you know, in here when you're trying to look at those pictures. And you can see the A-pillar is all kinds of wrinkled up. And that right there is enough for me to say, uh, no, thank you. No, thank you. I've seen what it takes to replace the A-pillar. B-pillar may be messed up, too. Uh, as you can see from the uh, the impact of the A-pillar, it's kind of pulled everything forward out. It was also slightly <laughs> hit from the front. So you got a little bit of front end damage, hood, bumper, the normal stuff. Um, but this gap right here, the way this fender has been pushed into that A-pillar has been bent in like that. The rocker panel, it's into the back door. There's a lot. There may, there may even be damage as far back here into this pillar. It's hard to say. It's just one of those things. I know there's a little bit of suspension damage. Uh, I wanted to come look at it in person. Could this mean that I'm looking for an Econo box? It could, unlikely, but it could mean that I'm looking for an Econo box. I'd love to find something that gets great gas mileage because I keep putting over a thousand miles a week driving to and from the new house. Man, it started right up though. Dang it, that sucks. I mean, it's good that it started. <laughs> It's good that it started up. That's a good thing, but man, uh, no, no side bags blown. No. How about that? Nineteen thousand miles, man. This is like, it's like a new car, a new car. That sucks. Now I'm sure it could be fixed. I just think that uh, for us, for the channel right now, this is uh. This is beyond what we need to be trying to get into right now. This is something that I can foresee lots of problems arising as you start taking things apart, finding out it's gonna cost more and more to fix it. So as much as I think this would be a great car for a little gas saving commuter car, um, this isn't it, sorry. Here's another one that's on my watch list, a 2013 Chevy Silverado. Yes, I am looking at a few trucks and a couple of them I'm not gonna have in any of these videos because well, they're just kind of my little secrets and we'll see what happens. Looks like someone was burning the heck out of the tires though. That's nice. Let's see how bad the damage is. Okay, so listen, I wanna tell you up front, I don't care about damage like this. I don't care about a little bit of side swipe damage. I don't care about a little damage to the bed. Obviously these tires are, are gone. There's nothing left of them. Um, there's gotta be more to it than this. This is fine. I just need something that's going to actually be able to pull a trailer. When the time comes, we're gonna go out to buy another trailer. And as much as I love the Silverado, uh, or sorry, the Silverado, the GMC Sierra that I have now, as much as I absolutely love that truck, that truck I don't believe is going to be making routine trips um, an hour plus each way. 
especially with a trailer and a car or truck being pulled behind it. So I will probably end up sending that truck down to Weird Beard in the near future. It's almost ready, I believe, to go up for sale. And uh, because of that, I need a truck that actually has some cojones. It needs to be able to pull, man. That's all I need to do. And I don't care if it's ugly. I don't care if it's got airbags blown. We can cut them out. Oh, this one's actually got a lot of bags blown. <laughs> Full sides. Both sides are blown. It must have hit something hard. This is going to be uh, undercarriage or suspension, I bet. This is a run and drive, though. Let's turn everything off here. Fire it up. She started right up, man. That's solid. That's solid. Good oil pressure. No gas. Uh, let's make sure the steering turns. Sometimes when you get suspension damage, you'll get a steering wheel that won't turn at all. This one turns. And it turns freely. So obviously, this tire is completely uh, off the bead here, or the rim is not on the, the, the bead of the tire, whatever, you know what I'm saying. This tire is no longer attached, but it looks like everything is still good. This could be a contender, man. It could be. I wonder what this is going to go for. Like I said, I'm not really concerned with the body damage. The doors work, that's that's what's important. Side airbags, we can get those. Headliner, I can get that from a junkyard. The AC is working. The important window works. Only 68,000 miles. Yeah, that AC is ice cold. This, this is a contender right here. As long as it's not the V6. If it's got a four, uh, a four three, if it's got a, if it's got a 5.3 or better in it, then we're in business. Man, look at this thing. She is quiet. I don't see anything wrong with this truck at all other than some minor body damage that I do not care about. Look, it's even got the factory Delco battery, folks. It's got the AC Delco battery in her. I would like to know what size this engine is, though, but I don't see the... Uh, I don't see the emissions tag. It's usually right here that tells you what size motor it is. It's definitely not the V6. We know it's a V8, but is it a is it a 5.3? Is it a 6.0? I'm gonna bet money it's probably a 5.3. And they also they put the small V8s in these too, don't they? It's like a 4.8 liter. Eh. Either way, either way, this is a contender. Make sure the wheels are facing the same direction. All right, this wheel's facing forward. What about this one? This wheel, I think, is facing forward. Yeah, this wheel looks like it's facing forward. Check the back wheels, make sure they're straight as well. I don't want something that's got a broken rear axle. Looks like it's even side to side and up to down. Yeah, same thing over here. Good. This could uh This could work, man. Yeah. If I can find me another truck, I think we'll send the uh GMC Sierra down to Weird Beard. I think we'll try to get like 2995 out of it. Verify this mileage real quick. If I can find the dang, uh, if I can find the dang mileage on this thing. Oh, Lord have mercy. Come on now. Okay. I don't know where the mileage is and I give up. Steering feels all right. Man, uh, this truck needs a cleaning. That's salt. That's sweat. Lots of sweat. This was a, a working man's truck right here. Or a working woman's. Could be a working woman's too. Comment below. Tell me what you guys think. I think it's a contender, man. I do. I have this funny feeling that we may have covered this one before. 
This is a 2013 Jaguar XJ. And man, I do feel like we covered this before. Ah, uh, this is, <laughs> I tell you guys, man, sometimes, sometimes I end up picking the same car as I was looking at before. And I think this is one I just, I can't remember. So if you've seen this car before, comment down in the comment section. Let me know that we saw this car before. It's a flood car. It's got to buy it now of uh, like $6,300. I don't know, man. Now the interior, carpets, clean, seats, lots of dust. But this is a very dusty area out here. So that's really nothing uh, that concerns me. Lots of dust on the interior, but I don't see any mold. I don't see any mildew. The issue that I have with it is it's a non-runner. Um, another issue I have is look here in the headlight. I know it's hard to see because it's foggy outside, but that is dirt and mud in the headlight. So that tells me the front end of the car either went down at an angle or water literally got this high. If it got that high with it running, I mean, look at this. If it got as high as the headlight with it running, here's the airbox, okay? Now, the airbox has a tube that runs up and goes under this. So there's the potential that it didn't suck up any water. There's the potential that this thing has not been started since the flood. And if that's the case, maybe it's okay. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm going to be pretty certain here that we don't have a oil dipstick. Yeah, I don't see an oil dipstick. I didn't figure we would have one. Yeah, I can see water definitely got up. To, uh, there's nothing in here, but I mean, you're not going to see anything in here. You know what I mean? You really need to check the oil. And I'd love to try to crank it by hand just a little bit. I mean, overall, it's not a bad looking car. Yes, that's my phone going off. But if water got as deep as it looks like it got... I don't think this thing would be worth taking a risk on. Got that water bag in here. So, I mean, obviously we had water in the car. Otherwise, this bag wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be full of water. And it does smell kind of funky. It, it truly does. So, as much as I, th I love this car. This car is beautiful. Supercharged XJ, man. This thing is a beast. Or at least it was. But chances are very high that it's got an engine full of water. So we're going to walk away from it. Next, we've got a 2014 Cadillac ATS. Beautiful car, isn't it? I think it is. I, I love Cadillacs, man. I really do. Look at those tiny little wheels, though. <laughs> the wheels and tires on this thing look ridiculously small. I wonder what the horsepower and torque ratings on this thing is. 2.0 turbo. Let's see what kind of damage we got here. Okay, so we got damage to this door and honestly if this was me i'm not fixing this door does the door work yes it does nope not fixing the door this however yeah obviously trash this quarter panel right here and that's going to be a huge job <clears throat> looks like the rocker survived though i think does this door open no it does not of course not it's mangled yeah what do you think hit this it looks like maybe it was a a rim or something right yeah there it looks like there's some tire marks maybe a semi rim i don't know yeah that thing that thing is that's toast man that's toast see what it looks like on the interior sounds like this is one that'll start up though should we start it up let's do it where's the uh where's the push to start on this thing there we go turn some of this stuff down here there we go change oil soon man she's actually running real strong this is a nice little car you think this is a fuel efficient car Man, I don't care about that back door. I don't need it. I just need something to commute back and forth a thousand miles a week, right? <laughs> uh, this could do it. I'm kidding. I'm not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't buy this car for that. Where's the daggum hood release on this thing? Well, that's nice. I swear, 
they love hiding the hood release on these things. I think they just want to see people suffer. It's got a little bit of front end damage too. Well, isn't that cute? It's an adorable little uh, two liter. Man, she's a little on the dirty side too. Honestly though, it doesn't look like this is a, a hard vehicle to work on. I mean, look, the turbo charge is right there too. Turbo fails, no big deal. No big deal. It's right there. Yeah, this isn't for me. I still like the car though. Just uh it's got a little too much body damage in the in the back here for something that uh that I could deal with at this point in time. That sucks though. I figured I'd give it a look though. Other than the back door and the rear quarter, it's still a nice looking car. Next we have a 95 Jaguar XJS 2 Plus 2. And it's sad to see this car here. Beautiful car. It looks like someone had taken exceptional care of it look at this top the a, a convertible top will tell you a lot about a used car the window i mean this thing was absolutely beautiful and then you get to this side what a shame what a shame Ninety-five thousand miles she had some miles on her but when you consider it's a 1995 Oh yeah, that door doesn't open at all. That mileage is not bad at all. This, this thing is a beast, man. Look at that straight six. My goodness. That is a long, long motor. That's what she said. Uh-oh, hood doesn't want to close. There we go. Let's see if we can take a peek at it from the... Uh, from the passenger side i'm sure this door opens there we go listen to how it closes ready listen to this one more time wow <laughs> oh man beautiful car instrument cluster action here Wait a minute. Oh, that's not a 95. That's 45,000 miles, folks. I don't know if you can even see that right there. That is 45,000, not 95,000. Wow. That's sad. She was a beautiful car. What do we got? Maintenance records in here? I don't know, man. Could just be books. It's got a little mildew and stuff on the books. Man, this was a solid car. I'm telling you, I would drive the living heck out of this thing. Well, not right now, but I would. If it wasn't smashed like this, I would roll one of these on the daily. Well, except for the whole it's not fuel efficient thing. But either way, looks supersede fuel economy every time. <clears throat> how about a 2006 ford ranger now this right here could pull anything you put behind it 260,000 miles on the clock white letter hercules tires i'm telling you this is the one right here what is this an old uh an old autozone truck maybe I don't know. Man, she's been in a wreck before, though, hadn't she? <laughs> Look at the gaps. Good God. That's hardcore. <laughs> wow. Man, this, uh, this truck has been used and abused. What's that old saying? Rode hard and put away wet. <sighs> Good. <laughs> let's, let's see what's under the hood. If it's got a Duralast battery, then we know. Let's see. Oh, that's not the hood release. There's the hood release. Man, look at that seat, though. Jeez. All right. It says it's a run and drive. I'm betting this is going to have the, uh, what do you think, the 2.3? That little uh, little 2.3 liter four banger? Yeah, it does. Dag, nab it. Huh. 
Well, it's got a Super Start Premium battery in it. Boy, that is a... Uh, <laughs> that is an oily engine. Good night. It's got a fairly new air compressor on it, though. You can see that air compressor was recently replaced. It looks like the newest thing under the hood. You know, it wouldn't surprise me, honestly, even with 260,000 miles. Let's see underneath. I'm curious to see if we got some massive oil leaks. Uh, obviously, you're not going to be pulling trailers and cars with this. There is an oil spot under it. But if you look up here, everything looks pretty dry. Tires look good. Let's take a look from this side and see if that oil leak is coming from this vehicle or if that's residual oil for something else. Uh, it may be from this vehicle. It's hard to tell. I'll get the GoPro up in there. Maybe you guys can see it. Oil leak. I don't know. You tell me. It'd be a good work truck for somebody. I mean, assuming the tranny's not bad on it. With this kind of mileage, I just don't, I don't think this is a... Oh, there's no headliner either. <laughs> She's in bad shape. Oh, it's got power. Hold on. Oh, well, that didn't sound promising. Uh, she's misfiring pretty hard. Yeah, she's misfiring real bad. I mean, it's only got four cylinders. Definitely misfiring on one of them. And boy, and that air conditioning comes on and it smells, uh, whoo, smells bad. But the AC works. Put her in gear. Yeah, there's reverse. There's drive. Seems like the misfire is trying to clear up some. Truthfully, it's hard to say. But we got the flashing check engine light now. That's a hard miss. Fired up again. Yeah. What do you guys think? I'll tell you what I think. I think with uh, 260,000 miles on her, this thing is just something we need to pass on. I'll bet it's not something as simple as a, uh, a spark plug or a coil. Could be. I mean, it could be. It could be something as simple as a spark plug. Uh, plug wire, the coil, could be something really easy. Then again, it could have a burnt valve, it could have popped the head gasket, it's how cracked the head, hard to say, man. Hmm, I don't know. If it went cheap enough, it might be worth the risk. I don't think this is gonna be a very good flip vehicle, though, do you? 300,000 miles, and I mean, the, the front end on this thing had to have been crunched hard. Look at the, look at this, man. I mean, that's, that's bad. That's bad. Yeah, we probably ought to just stay away from this one. And that's it. See you later. <laughs> yes, I'm being serious. That is it. We've only got six cars per video this week. I'm sorry, guys. Slim Pickens, that paired with the fact that I am in the middle of still fixing the truck. I got to replace the turbocharger on the cruise, hopefully today. And I've got a lot more work to do on the house. I bought two more five-gallon buckets of flat, flat white paint. I took your advice, I do listen. I am just on a serious time crunch right now. I barely even have time to sleep anymore. So I gotta get through these cars so I can go get the rest of this stuff done so I can record more videos for you guys. But I hope you enjoyed this week's walk around, or this week's, today's walk around. If you did, give the video a big thumbs up. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to share it on your social media accounts, share it with your friends. I truly appreciate it. Follow me on Instagram. And with that, thank you all for watching. Stay safe out there. We will catch you very soon in the next one.